It's 1887, and two brothers arrive in Detroit with nothing more than their ambitions. Now they're operating one of the biggest machine shops in the city, working for the man who would forever shape the future of the automotive industry, Henry Ford. But what many people don't know is that the brothers were really the ones who helped make the Ford company into a massive success. Almost every component of their vehicles with the highest quality possible. Without them, the Model T wouldn't exist, and the Ford Motor Company would not be what it is today. Despite their legendary achievements, they've remained obscure figures. Their legacy is hidden in the massive shadow of Henry Ford. Their partnership with Ford would later turn into a rivalry when the brothers decided to open their own car company and join the competition in the automobile market. At one point, it rose to become the second best-selling car company in the U.S. This is the tragic story of the Dodge brothers. In the 1860s, John and Horace Dodge were born and raised in the small town of Niles, located in the deepest southwest corner of Michigan. There, their father ran a machine shop alongside his two brothers, where they built and maintained boat engines. Growing up in Niles, John and Horace were taught to be hard workers. According to them, their childhood wasn't easy. In those days, we were the poorest kids in town. When the cold weather came, Horace and I were obliged to go barefoot and wear ragged clothes. We didn't grumble, but tried to make the mother think it was all right. This humble beginning seems to have brought the red-haired brothers together as partners. Despite the four-year age difference between them, they shared the same strong initiative and work ethic from a very young age and took on any jobs they could to support their family. However, in 1882, the Dodge family had to relocate first from Niles to Battle Creek and then again later to Port Huron after the collapse of the family's business. As teenagers, John and Horace began working alongside their father at the Upton Manufacturing Company, which specialized in steam engines and threshing machines. It was here that two brothers mastered the trade of a skilled machinist and gained invaluable experience working with iron and steel. These duties quickly turned into a passion for the young men. However, John, the older brother, wasn't satisfied with staying at Port Huron. Thus, after turning 21, and with just 50 cents in his pocket, John packed his things and headed off toward one of the most prominent industrial cities of the time, Detroit. In Detroit, in 1886, John Dodge began working at Murphy Ironworks, a manufacturing company that specialized in steam boilers for stationary and marine engines. A year later, Horace Dodge also arrived in Detroit, and as expected, John quickly got his younger brother to work with him. Although the brothers enjoyed their job, the heavy work in a smoke-filled shop might have been a factor in John's developing tuberculosis. John's diagnosis scared the family and left him unable to work for a few months, during which time he reportedly drank large quantities of medicine in order to recover. On the other hand, Horace had to take on a second job in order to take care of both himself and his older brother. His new job would bring him into contact with a man named Henry Leland, who would later go on to establish both Cadillac and Lincoln. Mr. Leland brought his high standards of precision machine work to the city of Detroit, and there's no doubt Horace gained valuable experience. Once John recovered from tuberculosis, the brothers agreed to find a new job that was safer and cleaner so that their work would never jeopardize their health again. This led them to work at the Dominion Typograph Company in 1892, which was located across the river in Windsor, Canada. There, John and Horace manufactured typesetting machines and learned how to use special tools that allowed for greater precision in their process of making machine parts. It was also during their time in Canada that the brothers made their first documented entrance into the transportation industry when Horace invented a four-point bicycle ball bearing. His innovative design had the advantage of not only being dust-free, but also offering a smoother ride. Following the success of his invention, the red-haired brothers partnered up with one of the managers from the typography company. Fred Evans and the three of them went on to establish the Evans and Dodge Bicycle Company in 1897, using their patented bearing. This venture became a huge success in the market. The company's sales immediately soared so high and so quickly that by January 1898, they were already making plans to expand their branches in London, Ontario, and Montreal. 
However, fierce competition in the bicycle industry at the close of the 19th century would seriously threaten the future of their company. Although the brothers still maintained good jobs and royalties from their patented bearing design, they decided to move on. They sold their shares in the company for $7,500, returned to Detroit, and used the money to establish their own machine shop, which they named Dodge Brothers, in the year 1900. Little did they know this decision was about to change the whole American car industry and the rest of the world. At the time they opened their machine shop, John was nearly 36 years old, while Horace was 32. The brothers brought in some of the most advanced equipment. In less than three months, they quickly established their business as the best place where close and accurate machine work could be done, and customers came flocking to their shop from every corner of the state. In the beginning, they usually dealt with small companies, but all that would soon change when the brothers were approached by a man named Ransom Eatley Olds to help him produce parts for his automobile company, Olds Motor Works. Mr. Olds was one of the first men to establish an automobile factory in Detroit. In 1901, he allowed his car manufacturing company to increase their output by a much larger degree after hearing about the Dodge Brothers shop. He tasked them with supplying engines and transmissions for his Model R Curved Dash. By the end of its first year, the Curved Dash had turned into a commercial sensation after securing hundreds of sales, becoming the first American gasoline car to sell in significant numbers by 1902. The Dodge name soon became synonymous with quality and reliability, and this would bring them to a man who would change their fortunes forever, and together they would reshape the entire automotive world. That man was Henry Ford. In 1902, 39-year-old Henry Ford was making his third attempt to launch an automobile company after failing in his first two ventures. When he heard about the Dodge brothers, he went to check out their shop in person, and after meeting them face to face, Henry was so impressed with their work that he immediately offered them a contract. Ford had yet to become an automotive genius, and he had a reputation for losing money. Dodge brothers, despite knowing the risks of working with Mr. Ford, turned down a renewal contract from Oldsmobile in 1903. They agreed to supply Ford with 650 sets of running gear, which is basically a working automobile without tires, wheels, or a body, at 250 each. However, Mr. Ford had relatively little cash on hand, and while the brothers came through on their deliveries, Ford often missed his payments, which frequently upset John and Horace. So the two brothers threatened to sell the machines elsewhere as outlined in their contract, but as tempted as they were, the brothers settled down and figured out a better way to do business. John and Horace proposed to write off the $7,000 that Ford owed them and even give him an additional $3,000, all in exchange for 10 stock shares in the Ford Motor Company, as well as all of Ford's assets in the event that the company went bankrupt. Henry hated their proposal and tried to counter with a different offer but knowing his back was against the wall, he agreed to their terms, and the Dodge brothers proceeded to work as usual. Ford Motor Company was a genius move for the brothers. Brothers also made a tremendous amount of money from manufacturing the major components of every Ford model between 1903 and 1914, including the legendary Model T. By 1914, it was estimated that nine out of every 10 cars in the world were Fords. The brothers had grown their employee network from 120 to over 5,000 workers and had effectively made themselves the largest supplier of automotive parts on the planet. They became among the wealthiest men in the city. However, John and Horace were known for hanging out with their employees after hours, hitting the bars, and getting drunk next to the same people who built their machines. They also had a reputation for getting into fights at local bars and restaurants. This made them unsuitable in the eyes of Detroit's elite class, and they were turned away from clubs and orchestras. Although the brothers didn't really care what people thought of them, once, Horace was denied membership at the prestigious Gross Point Country Club. In response to this, he bought the property next to the place and built a huge and extravagant mansion with a 12-car garage facing the club, all in an effort to make as much noise as possible and annoy the guests. While the partnership between Henry Ford and the Dodge brothers made them all very successful, it was always clear that both parties would eventually part ways. Ford had been looking to rid himself of the brothers, 
while John and Horace had also grown weary of working for a man whose arrogance and stubbornness often irritated them for years. John Dodge decided to resign from his role as vice president of the Ford Motor Company, saying he was tired of being carried around in Henry Ford's vest pocket. On July 1, 1914, the brothers launched their own automobile enterprise, the Dodge Brothers Motor Company. Horace and John enjoyed their reputation as the two best mechanics in Michigan. Their names had become synonymous with anything that had to do with quality. So it was no surprise when more than 6,000 people came to see the grand debut of the first Dodge car, the Model 30. The new Dodge car came with a 35-horsepower four-cylinder engine, producing 15 more horsepower than the Ford Model T. And even aside from its performance capabilities, the Model 30 was also revolutionary in other ways. It was the first automobile with an all-metal body, and unlike Ford's Model T, Dodge's car had an electric starter headlight, a 12-volt electrical system, and a speedometer. By 1915, more than 45,000 Dodge cars had been built and sold, making them America's third best-selling automaker in just their first full year of production. Like Ford, Dodge Brothers did not make annual model updates, but instead focused on mechanical improvements. It was clear that the rivalry between the two brands had started, and the Dodge Brothers Motor Company was on the rise, from 72,000 vehicles sold in 1916 to over 100,000 vehicles sold in 1917. As expected, Ford was not thrilled about the brothers' success. While the brothers were rapidly building and selling their cars, they still maintained a 10 ownership share of the Ford Motor Company and used the dividends from those stocks to help fund their business. In other words, Henry Ford was directly paying for the operations of a competing company, and he hated it. He decided to stop paying dividends to his shareholders and instead use that money to build a huge production factory. He planned to double his workers' wages to $5 a day and drastically cut down prices for the Model T, all in an attempt to grow his company while hurting the profits of his investors, particularly the Dodge Brothers. As a result, the Dodge brothers filed a lawsuit against Ford, and after three years of battling in court, they finally won the case. Henry Ford had to pay them over $2 million in back dividends, as well as resume their quarterly payments. Frustrated with this arrangement, Ford decided in 1919 to buy out their entire shares of his company for a hopping sum of $25 million, giving John and Horace a huge fortune once again. John and Horace were still enjoying success with their automobile company. Customers were so satisfied with their cars. In 1916, a U.S. Army lieutenant used three Dodge vehicles to chase down a group of bandit leaders during a U.S. expedition to Mexico against Pancho Villa, effectively making Dodge the first military vehicle ever used by the U.S. Army. This would later play a role in their new line of business as they earned a contract to supply military vehicles to the U.S. Army during the First World War, as well as chassis for trucks and ambulances. Most importantly, it helped Dodge's automobiles earn a reputation for toughness, a reputation that the brand still promotes today. By 1920, the brothers had turned their business into the second best-selling car company in the U.S. On January 2, 1920, John and Horace left Detroit to attend the National Automobile Show in New York. By the time they'd returned from their trip the following week, they contracted influenza, which quickly developed into pneumonia. Horace's health began to improve, but John's condition worsened, leaving everyone around him in shambles when he died just 10 days later. Horace eventually managed a full recovery, but was completely broken over the loss of his older brother. Horace continued running the business, but it wasn't long before his health once again began to decline. On December 10, 1920, Horace died of cirrhosis of the liver. After their deaths, their widows inherited the company and placed Frederick J. Haynes in charge of it. Frederick was in many ways the perfect successor for Dodge as he worked closely with the brothers and had a sound understanding of their vision for the company. Under his leadership, they introduced a variety of new models that would help increase the company's sales. Unfortunately, Mr. Haynes's time as president was short-lived, as in 1925, the widows sold the company to an investment bank for $146 million in cash. 
However, this investment group had no experience whatsoever working in the car industry. And as a result, the Dodge company struggled immensely during this period. The company was put up for sale once more, and Walter P. Chrysler would step up to acquire Dodge for $170 million in 1928. This has been the story of Dodge and its founders, two brothers from Niles, Michigan, who helped establish the foundation of the American car industry and tragically died young at the peak of their careers. Sadly, they remain mostly obscure figures recognized only for the millions of automobiles that carry their names, the Dodge brothers and then Dodge. That's all for today. Do you have any suggestions for a future video? Tell us in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share, subscribe to our channel, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one.